In this video, I'm going to talk about autoimmune conditions, how they develop or what causes them, the connection between autoimmunity and the gut, and why everyone keeps bringing the gut to the conversation, the problem with relying on conventional medicine treatments only uh, with an autoimmune condition, and things that you can do from your home starting today to help you reverse and reduce the inflammation from autoimmunity, so make sure you watch until the end. My name is Noor Zibde. I am a functional and integrative dietitian, and I've been helping my clients overcome digestive, immune, and inflammatory conditions using food, supplements, and lifestyle, utilizing advanced testing as well. And my patients with autoimmune conditions have amazing results more than they or their doctors have ever imagined. So I'm going to do my best to share those tips with you. So how do autoimmune conditions develop? Autoimmunity is when our immune cells, by mistake, start to attack our own cells. So think of the immune system as an army that is supposed to get orders from the headquarters or from generals on who to attack and where to attack and where to be. In a healthy situation, the immune system should fight foreign invaders only. And most of the time, these are microbes, pathogens, maybe some every now and then inflammatory compounds like triggers from the environment like pollen or allergens or other things and chemicals that come in air or food supply. So that's why we need a healthy, strong immune system. However, in autoimmune conditions, it's like the immune cells lost control and they stopped listening and now they're attacking our own cells instead of fighting those pathogens or foreign invaders. Of course, that is a problem. Regardless of the autoimmune condition that you have, whether it's Hashimoto's or rheumatoid arthritis or celiac disease, the common thing between all these diseases and the problem is not the thyroid or the joints. The problem is the immune system that lost control and is becoming overactive. So what actually causes autoimmune conditions? There isn't one thing that we can point a finger to and say, this causes autoimmunity. It's actually a mix of interconnecting factors that starts with genetics and the environment. So when it comes to our genes, there are certain genes that are associated with autoimmune conditions. And having a first-degree family member like a parent or a sibling with an autoimmune condition unfortunately increases your risk of developing that condition or any other autoimmune condition. However, it does not determine that you will get it. You may never have the condition. And that's where the environment comes in. And the environment is what turns those genes on. So let's talk about the environmental factors that can trigger autoimmunity. First, we have infections like parasites, viruses, and bacteria. And they have been connected to initiating or sustaining autoimmune activity. So a virus, viruses like Epstein-Barr has been connected to rheumatoid arthritis, MS, and bacterial infections in the gut have also been connected to MS, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and others. And many times, people with gut infections don't actually have digestive symptoms. So in other words, the bacteria in the gut can trigger autoimmunity without triggering pain or bloating or any digestive problems. And that's a problem because the person could have an autoimmune attack and they or their doctors may never make the connection back to the gut or uh, that there is an infection that is one of the root causes. And of course, then they end up with the autoimmune flare up or inf inflammation for many, many years before that is ever uh, connected. Next, we have exposure to toxins in our food or water or air. These may include pesticides, plastics, heavy metals, um, smoke or others. Then we have stress. So that's physical or mental and emotional stress and whether it is acute and repeated or it's a chronic type of stress. So stress is going to increase the production of stress hormones and these are going to dysregulate the immune system and they're going to increase the production of something called cytokines, which are chemicals produced by immune cells. And these chemicals are inflammatory and they're going to lead to a cascade of immune and inflammatory response in the body. 
Then we have nutrient deficiencies. So vitamin D deficiency has been connected to many autoimmune conditions. And then deficiencies of antioxidants and omega-3s. These rob the body from the ability to fight infections or help the body support detoxification or manage stress. So they even make the effect of other parts of our environment even worse. Then we have food sensitivities, and food sensitivities are really immune responses in uh, the gut to foods that are supposed to be safe and healthy. So the immune system loses the ability to recognize food as safe for a variety of reasons, including improper digestion and bacterial infection. So now food that is supposed to pass through the gut lining, broken down, digested, and safe, starts to trigger the immune system. And now we have uh, more of a confused immune system that can lead to autoimmunity. So now that we have the genes and the environment interfering with the genes, that will lead to changes in the microbiome and inflammation in the gut. So we will get dysbiosis, which is a shift between the good and the bad, favoring more of the um, inflammatory or the bad microbes and not enough of the good microbes that are going to help us and reduce inflammation. And good bacteria actually help us help the immune system calm down and not get confused. And changes in the microbiome are going to lead to intestinal permeability, which is leaky gut. Now, a little bit on leaky gut. The gut is the largest surface area that separates our cells and our tissues from the outside world or the environment. It is supposed to allow certain things, which are nutrients in. So the immune cells are going to aggregate in the gut just in case something that is not supposed to pass through comes in and they're ready to fight it. So when we have intestinal permeability, the gut is leaky. It's allowing more things to come in. And we have microbes, we have pathogens, we have their uh, byproducts, and we have food that is not digested. And we have maybe chemicals in our food or air or water supply that's coming into the gut. And that is going to create an inflammatory immune response in the gut. The immune cells are not going to like it. They're going to start fighting them. And then the gut immune response is going to become an, a systemic uh, inflammatory immune response. So after that, people start to experience maybe headaches and brain fog and low energy, trouble thinking, mood swings, maybe skin issues, joint pain, muscle pain. And all of these are signs of systemic inflammation. Now, if the systemic and the gut inflammation and immune activity is sustained, we don't do anything about it, at some point the immune system loses the ability to recognize its own cells at self, it is chaotic in there, and now we have autoimmune conditions triggered. As you can see, there are many steps along the way that eventually lead to autoimmunity, so it does not depend on your genes only just because a family member has an autoimmune condition does not mean you will develop it. And that's why prevention is really important and uh, putting those lifestyle changes that I'm gonna be talking about next. So what's the problem with relying on conventional medicine treatments only when it comes to autoimmunity? The thing is, once an autoimmune disease is uh, triggered or autoimmunity is happening, you can't really cure it or make it go away. But you can calm down the inflammation and you can do things to calm down the immune system. So once there is a diagnosis or the autoimmune activity is there, the goal is to reduce the inflammation to control the immune system, to calm down uh, or alleviate the symptoms if there is, for example, pain. And we want to replace the compounds that are not being produced anymore, such as insulin or maybe thyroid hormone. Um, so insulin for type 1 diabetes, thyroid hormone for Hashimoto's, or maybe saliva for someone with uh, Sjogren's or something else. So the problem with conventional medicine treatments is that the medicines used are going to suppress all of the immune activity in the gut. And that is a problem because many of the times, as you saw, gut infections and other infections, not just in the gut, are one of the root causes of autoimmunity. So treatments that suppress all immune activities, even the ones that we need, are going to make the root cause of the problem worse and puts the patient at risk for other infections. So they become immunocompromised. 
Then we also have steroids that are used. Not only they suppress the immune system, they can also suppress the adrenals. And chronic stress that leads to adrenal problems is going to get worse. So if stress was one of the root causes, now you're making that root cause even worse. We also know that steroids can lead to bone loss, blood sugar fluctuations, and mood swings, adding and contributing to stress even more. And then NSAIDs used, they can create ulcers or bleeding or digestive problems. So that can be an issue for many people as well. These medications and treatments can be harsh and can create side effects. And the goal really when we are in the functional medicine and functional nutrition mindset, we actually don't want to suppress all the immune system. We want to modulate it. And that word to modulate the immune system means to guide it and uh, regulate the immune system to fight the pathogens, to fight the bad bugs, but also protect us and not fight our own cells. Now, I'm not saying to never ever take your medications or to stop medications. This is for educational reasons only. I don't know your medical background or how uh, severe your flare-up is. But if your doctor is only relying on medications that are uh, going to suppress all immune activity and they are not giving you other options or there is no progression or they're not considering other diet and lifestyle, they may not believe in these strategies. But if you're still watching this, I know you do, or maybe you're still exploring what's available out there and this is like one of the first videos you watch. So if you are looking for those approaches, make sure you watch until the end. Have a conversation with your doctor. What are your other options? How can can you improve other things? There may be a possibility to get off the medications or maybe reduce the dose or space them out less frequently so you don't experience any of the side effects. And if you follow the tips that I'm going to be sharing, you will see a lot of changes and a lot of improvements in your health. I promise you that. And just a quick reminder, if you're liking this content so far, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button because so many people need to watch this content. So when you like and subscribe, YouTube will make it available to them as well. And that would be a huge help to everyone else who is with an autoimmune condition as well. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the things that you can do from your home starting now to reverse autoimmunity to calm the inflammation. The first step is we are going to load our diet with anti-inflammatory foods. We're going to try to get antioxidants from vegetables first and then from fruit. We are trying to going to incorporate a lot of herbs and aromatics because they have antioxidants and they help balance the microbiome. We are going to go get healthy fats from olive oil and avocado and omega-3 rich foods and typically I'm not against nuts and seeds. I know some diets out there for autoimmunity have people eliminate nuts and seeds. I haven't found that to be a requirement for my clients, but each one is person is different. And we're also going to try to get fiber from a variety of sources as well. And all of these things um, are going to help reduce inflammation. And then they're going to help us with the next step, which is the next step to improve the diversity and the richness of our microbiome. So we're going to also do that with uh, prebiotic uh, fibers as much as tolerated. We're going to incorporate polyphenols, which are a type of antioxidants. And we are going to um, maybe try fermented foods like sauerkraut and fermented vegetables. I know people will ask about yogurt. Yes, it is fermented, but some people with autoimmunity have problems with dairy. So I usually lean on fermented vegetables first. And in many cases, we might need, and I often use supplements for prebiotics, probiotics, and postbiotics with my patients in autoimmune conditions. And we also know that we, omega-3s are important for the microbiome. So the same things you did for step one are gonna help you for step two. The third thing is now we gotta take out the things that are not gonna help you. And these are all types of sugars, really processed ingredients, um, processed oils, like really bad rancid oils in sitting in plastic containers, um, exposed to the sun, uh, food colorings and ingredients that you cannot recognize. We're also going to remove dairy and gluten. Now, gluten, the problem with it is that it actually promotes leaky gut or intestinal permeability. The more gluten you eat, the more leaky your gut becomes. And leaky gut or intestinal permeability is one of the root causes of uh, autoimmunity. So we got to take that out. Also, gluten can create inflammation and traditional wheat has or like non-organic has glyphosate 
which has been connected to leaky gut. So that's going to be problematic as well. And then with gluten, another problem is that there is something called protein mimicry. So gluten is a protein and it can look like our own protein. So in the process of our body, um, when the body is exposed to gluten and it's fighting it, it can also fight our own cells. So it can work against us in many ways. When it comes to dairy, there's also that protein mimicry. Dairy proteins look like our proteins or some of our proteins. And so the body, if it's fighting dairy, it will fight us. So we got to take it out of the diet and there is some connections uh, or some studies show a connection between type 1 diabetes and MS with uh, dairy consumption. So I typically recommend people take it out of the diet and maybe later on experiment with adding something like yogurt because at least yogurt has fermented uh, bacteria. So if it works for you, then that would be the best type of dairy to incorporate. Then the next step would be to take a look, a hard look at your lifestyle. Now, this is can encompass many things. First thing is stress. What can you do to reduce or eliminate your stress? Can you say no to some of the volunteer activities that you're on? Can you uh, make major changes in your life if possible? If you're not able to eliminate your stress, how can you manage it better? How can you create periods in your day? Like, something that you do daily and something you do on weekly uh, and something you do monthly to reduce stress, whether it's breathing or meditation or nature walks or dancing, yoga, uh, going on a weekend getaway or somewhere that helps you manage and reduce your stress. Then we're going to talk about sleep. You need quality and quantity of sleep. Are you uh, getting to bed at a, a reasonable time? Are you matching circadian rhythm? Getting a morning sun is going to be really helpful in helping you sleep better at night. Then we're going to talk about reducing toxins in your household. So look at the cleaning products that you use at home, your personal care items, maybe reducing the visits to salons where you may get exposure to chemicals and uh, plastics in your kitchen and taking these out and replacing them with uh, glass and better uh, cookware. Also, as part of a lifestyle, we have to talk about exercise. For many people with autoimmune conditions, activity is really difficult because of the pain. So we want to try to get movement that feels good. So move at a pace and at a, an intensity that is feels good for you, whether it's a light walk or even stretching. However, sometimes some people are actually on the other end and they're really pushing hard and doing a lot of intense uh, workouts. And this is not the time to train for a bodybuilding competition or marathon, for example. Your body needs to rest as well. And then the last thing that should be easily accessible is getting your vitamin D tested. So ask your doctor to get your level tested. Even though deficiency is considered usually 30 or below, really at 30, it's not sufficient. You need your vitamin D level to be between 50 and 80 nanomoles per liter because vitamin D deficiency has been connected to a lot of autoimmune conditions because vitamin D actually helps regulate and modulate the immune system. So the five things we talked about are we're going to incorporate anti-inflammatory diet. We are going to do everything we can to improve our microbiome. And then we are going to take out gluten, dairy, processed ingredients, sugars, and things that you don't recognize. Then we're going to look at lifestyle, and then we're going to get your vitamin D tested. Once you get these covered, or as you're working on these, these are the foundation. If you want to take it to the next level, you want to go deeper, or maybe the medications you're taking are not working, or maybe this is the first time you get diagnosed and the doctors are still not prescribing a medication for you, or your current medications are causing side effects or other problems, and you feel like you're ready to take it to the next level, then there are tests that are available for you. So some of the things that I use with my own clients are food sensitivity testing. I run a stool analysis to see what's going on with their microbiome. And depending what's going on, we talk about um, things in their environment, or we may do testing for metals or environmental toxins, or maybe mold or something else, or we may, I may refer out to other specialists. But always I start with food sensitivity and stool testing. And then I base my recommendations or a personalized diet and supplements things that we focus on to improve the microbiome, reduce inflammation, um, maybe uh, support detoxification or the adrenals, and then we fine-tune nutrients, vitamins, and minerals in for that specific individual. So 
work on the first things that I had su suggested in the beginning. Uh, and then whenever you're ready, find a provider who can help you. And you can still work with your conventional medicine doctor, but then have another person on your team supporting you and providing you the help that you need. Now, if you found this video helpful, I would love to hear from you. What are the changes that are you're going to incorporate in your lifestyle? And I would also love to hear from you, whether you or someone you know has an autoimmune condition, what helped you overcome it and reduce the inflammation? And if you haven't done so already, uh, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll come and check the comments and I'll see you on the next video.